I know you guys are looking at that title like, you mean gender expression. You're struggling with your gender expression. No, y'all, I'm struggling with my gender perception. Let's get straight into it. I like the way I dressed you, but I'm worried I fucked with your gender expression. <laughs> Hello and good morning, Scullies. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Savon Pearson. If you are new here and welcome to this fuckery. <sighs> As you can see, I'm wearing my still over it shirt. So this video goes hand in hand with my last video where I was talking about me still being over dating because I feel like dating and gender perception plays a lot into the lesbian community. So that's really what I wanted to talk about today. So I'm wearing the still over it shirt because I think I'm at that point where I'm like, you know what, just, just f it all. The, the the gender norms, fuck all of that stuff. And I feel like a lot of us are at that point, but we're just kind of participating because we have to, or we're participating because we live in a heteronormative society. This video is gonna be a lot like my still over dating video. So it's gonna be another rant, as you guys said that you like that. So I will be telling you about my many experiences with how people have perceived my gender expression, perception, you know, how people have perceived my gender to be versus what my gender actually has. Been. And when I say gender, I don't mean they're perceiving me to not be a woman. I mean they're perceiving me to either be on a masculine uh, spectrum or in like the middle. So let me get into definitions before we get straight into this video. So in the lesbian community, I've noticed, and I'm sure you all have noticed too, that there's a hierarchy of masculinity and femininity. There's this, this spectrum. And so you have the studs who are on the masculine side. And then you have the femmes who are on the feminine side. And then in the middle you have stems who do both. Or you also have no labels who don't identify with either. And there's a whole other bunch of different definitions in between there. But these are just the ones that I'm going to be referring to in this video. So because this video goes hand in hand with my still over dating situation, I'm going to be talking about a lot of the same situations in that video and videos that I have posted before. It's just little things that I have left out because I really wasn't ready to face it head on. And to be quite honest with you, I was pretty embarrassed. But I feel like since I already dropped the beauty with is in the eye of the holder video and then I dropped the still over dating, I just completely bared my soul and my my relationship videos. You guys, you guys just know too much about me. So we're just gonna get close and personal. I hear I'm helping some of you by sitting here and talking about it. So <sighs> So growing up, I guess I was always what you considered a tomboy. Um, I didn't intentionally, I wasn't intentionally a tomboy. And I think that's always been the issue. I have an aggressiveness about me that people or like, maybe I'll sit with my legs open or like I have this, this masculinity piece of me um, that people falsely perceive to be me when it's in reality, it's just a small, like a very small piece of me. And so for example, you know, growing up, it's not like I had nice clothes. I didn't really express myself through clothes. If you could express yourself through clothes, you had money, you know? <laughs> like, I was shopping at thrift stores before thrift stores were cool. We were at the thrift shop. And though on my other side of the family, I would go shopping there, they would kind of pick out clothes for me because I didn't know what I liked. Because on the other side of my family, I just put on clothes to have on clothes and then you just go about your day. It wasn't about looking cute because you couldn't afford to look cute. And so that has been my mentality my whole life. You know, it's just throw on clothes. So you put on a pants and a shirt. And you know, there's been points in my life where right now what that comes up, I'm thinking of shake it up right now, where I wanted to completely like redo, give myself a complete makeover. I had a whole Google doc list. Actually, this was before Google docs. I had a whole word doc essentially talking about how I was going to transform my look and shake it up was a part of that. I wanted to dress like Zendaya and Bella Thorne and I was going to go to justice and I was going to dress just like them, but I didn't figure it out until high school. And that is where I moved with the other side of the family that I was just discussing. And they had a little bit more money in order for me to really like hone in on myself and figure out like what, what clothes do you want? But even then I was still in survival mode and I haven't gotten out of that survival mode until now and so I'm telling you this because that little thing has impacted me my entire life because I never had the money growing up as a child to, to really express myself through clothes 
or the eye for that either. I just never have. And then joining a community that is so dependent on identifying someone by the way they dress because we're all the same is just, <laughs> it was hell, you know, it was absolute hell for me. So let's get into some of these experiences that, I, that I've that i gone through that have, have really fucked me up. And now I'm just kind of thinking, maybe I should just abandon all these labels, you know, fuck this, you know what I mean? It's kind of funny because I'm thinking about this now and I look super girly, you know, like I have on this pink shirt, have the curls, like this right now is helping me. But if you look at any of my other videos with my straight hair and my black t-shirts, you would be like, hmm, I don't know what she identifies as. And that is my commonality throughout my life. No one knows what Savan identifies as. So with my first relationship, as I explained with you all, she was masculine presenting. So for me, it was just easy for me to go into that feminine role. And that is where I felt the most comfortable. And that is where I typically feel the most comfortable. I'm not more so, I'm, I don't like gender roles. Look, let's just be real. I don't like gender roles, but if I have to, I guess I'll go in that, in, in that spot if you wanna put me in one. And I'm saying that because my next relationship was all about gender roles. Whereas the first one, really, we weren't, we were, we were just women. The second one, we were, masculine and feminine and that one I didn't know how to handle so if you want to go way back if you remember my shortest and most toxic relationship the series the five-part series when I first saw her dating profile as I explained she gave off this masculine vibe you know she's wearing the the low hanging tops with the buttons out you know she she's given the light skin face you know when you look at her you thought that's a masculine person but then you meet her and it's not the case. And I'm sure that's how a lot of people feel about me because I'm, again, throwing on t-shirts and jeans and that's what dudes do or that's what masculine females do. They throw on t-shirts and jeans and some nice shoes, except I don't got the nice shoes. I just got on some random pair of Vans, you know, that are dirty. So when we got into the relationship, we started talking about that. And she expressed to me like real shit. She, and I quote, said to me in all of my other relationships, because of the way I dress, they perceived me to be masculine. And so they put me in that masculine role. I'm not doing it anymore. It is your turn. Yes, she said, it is your turn. And it was my turn. And I guess, and it was at a point where I had just got on the dating apps and I felt like, with the the pictures that i had already up there and i, I realized like i'm i have on a t-shirt and leggings like nothing about me is giving very feminine i'm not wearing makeup i don't have the nails it, it's just when they when the people that i'm attracted to looked at looked at that they would think oh you know that's a bro no i'm not a bro <laughs> I'm not a pro, but they think that when you just look at a picture of me and that was what I kept running into. And so by the time I got to her, I figured maybe that is what I am. Maybe I belong in that more masculine role. And so that's what I took on. You know, she became this like house housewife cleaning the house, even though I would cook. She'd be cleaning the house and stuff. She'd bring me my coffee and I'd be the, the, the quote unquote man in the relationship. But she expected that of me. She expected me to be more masculine masculine because that is the role that she got put into and I think that is a lot of us out here in the community we just get shoved into these masculine roles because we have a short haircut or because we decided that we just want to wear a t-shirt <laughs> a t-shirt instead of because we didn't you know put on a dress so after that relationship I realized like mm, maybe maybe this isn't right for me um, because again, I, I have this undeniable attraction to masculine energy and I'm, and masculine and masculine energy can absolutely go together, but I don't, I just feel, it just always felt like someone was telling me who I was instead of me figuring out who I was. And I know deep down, that's not me. Like that's really not me. And, but it's just been a struggle trying to get people to perceive me how I actually am on the inside. A big struggle I would have is entering lesbian spaces is figuring out what the fuck do I wear? Like, what do I put on my body so that I could be perceived the way I want to be perceived? But it's such a big question mark because I don't know how I want to be perceived. <laughs> like, I just want to be perceived as a woman, but not attached to any other roles, if that makes sense. 
But I would go to the bars and I would, I shit you not, sit at my closet and I would almost cry because I didn't know what to wear. I have about three dresses. I, I promise you I have three dresses. So I would put on the same three dresses and cycle those because the times that I wouldn't wear the dresses, I wouldn't be perceived as feminine. But the times that I would wear the dress is the time I told you about in the uh, my last video, the dating video, is when 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 that person they they made me feel amazing, you know, and I got noticed finally at a bar, and it wasn't until I wore a dress that I looked feminine, that I was able to get the attention that I wanted. But it sucks because it's like, why do I have to look a certain way in order to be received a certain way? And I'm thinking like. I, yeah, I can put on a dress, but do I feel comfortable in a dress? Like, I feel I like the way I'm received, but do I feel comfortable? Like, can we talk about it, girls? Are we really that comfortable in these dresses and heels and stuff? Or are we just, is this this beauty is pain type thing because we want to be perceived a certain way? I want to know what the secret is because I just want to be comfortable and it's not comfortable. Like it's, it's not comfortable to be that way all the time. It's not comfortable for me to have nails on. It's not. I work with cameras, equipment all the time. I can't have these long nails. How is this practical? But at the same time, it's like at the expense of what? I, I say all of these things, but at the expense of what? My dating life? It's just such an uncomfortable nuance and it, it, it makes, it keeps me on my toes at all points in time and it's just, it has me at this point where I'm just fed up with it, with it all, but we still got some more situations to get through. So this is a little bit of an additive of the situation that I talked about in my demisexuality and friendship video because I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be real. I'm a little nervous talking about this. So there's a lot of stuff I left out of that because I didn't want it to be a whole expose on that friend because that's just someone I really cared about. But this is something I'm not the proudest to say. But meeting her was one of those things that made me hyper aware of my gender expression. She was there at that point in time where I was thinking, maybe I need to go for a more masculine vibe. And so I'm going through this gender crisis of like, I think I'm just gonna completely switch over and just go masculine because this is how people are keep, keep perceiving me. So this is obviously, this obviously must be what I am, correct? And then it wasn't until like our friendship continued and she would respect that and I would get angry at her respecting that because I realized that that wasn't who I was. I was just doing it because everyone has been pushing it on me. I saw she was a masculine presenting person. And so from my perception of her, what I saw, she liked more feminine. She liked the makeup. She liked the nails. You know, that's what I, this is all what I thought. And so I'm seeing that and I'm thinking I am not feminine enough. I'm not good enough because I need to somehow be more feminine in order to be accepted by this person, therefore to be accepted by the whole community, if that makes sense. And so I would shit you not put on booty shorts to be around her. Like it was like I was trying to prove myself, prove my femininity to this person. I remember one time I went on set with some older lesbians and I don't know if you guys know this, but older lesbians, they're a whole other different breed, especially older black lesbians. I don't know. I don't know. They are like carbon copies sometimes. I'm sorry if you're an older black lesbian, but sometimes older black lesbians are carbon copies of the heteronormative society where it's more so like there's a man and there's a woman. And I'm like, okay, you guys need to relax on that. So I remember going on this set and walking up and I had on my set clothes, jeans and a t-shirt and some boots. And they're just looking me up and down and they're looking me up and down. They're like, hey, I'm like, hey, you know, hey, how are you? I'm Simon, you know, my, my ha ha chipper, <laughs> chipper voice. And I can see the confusion in their faces like, mm, okay. And they're feeling me out as they talk to me. And later on, they, they, they start to tell me like, oh, I just, I had no clue what to call you. Like, I, I just didn't know, like, what it, what do you, what are you, you know? It's like, I'm a spectacle, you know, like it's so, odd for me to not be on either side of the spectrum but it's not that i at the, at the, i identify as a femme at the moment you know right now or at that moment i identify as a femme so i was just so confused to be so perceived to be so for it to be so up in the air about 
who I was or who I am. One of the girls, she actually was just like, you know, maybe you're just a no label, you know, like tone just like this. Maybe you're just a no label. You're just a uh, savant. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. But it was the condescending notion of that that made me so angry. I don't know if it was the, the tone of her voice. I don't know if it was the fact that I felt like my whole femininity was threatened because this person decided to put me on the spectrum of the absence of femininity or masculinity, but just nothing, you know? That's not, obviously that's not how I think of no labels now, but that's what I was thinking at the time. And, and so to me, I felt so insulted. I, I've always felt so insulted. Like, what is it that people see when they look at me that gives off this masculine vibe? Like, yes, I am very aggressive. I can be. But at the end of the day, I will girl you to death. <laughs> I'm so confused. I'm very confused. And the very last situation I want to discuss that really was just like, mm -mm. <laughs> this is it, I'm done, <laughs> I'm over this, is I, so I told you about the speed dating event that I went on, so long, too long didn't read from the last video from my dating video, I went on, I went to a speed dating event, I met a girl there, she was really cool, and then I ended up asking her, what is she doing for Valentine's Day, but I wasn't thinking, asking her what she's doing for Valentine's Day means that we're dating. I was just thinking, let's do a Galentine's thing because we're two women, but I was stupid. I was at a speed dating event and I wasn't thinking. So I ended up having to take her on a date. So this is that date. I didn't talk about it much in that video, but I'm gonna talk about it now. This girl, she's a feminine, she's a feminine woman. I don't know if that was already obvious and me, I give off the tomboyish vibe. And so of course, when you have that dichotomy, that dynamic, the girl will always think that sure, the masculine one. And so I'm taking her on a date. I find the movie theater. She gets to choose the movie. I'm like, wait a minute. I want to choose the movie. Mind you, I pick this like dinner and movie place. <laughs> so I pick a dinner and movie place. So we get there. The tickets are already $40. Then we get in there and then we have to pay uh, for the food in general. And so the issue is not the money. The issue is how it all went down. You know, the issue is, is the assumption that I'm the dominant, I'm the masculine, I'm the one that take care, takes care of everything that I just, it, that set me off. And I think that's another reason why when I, when I see feminine women that are interested in me, I kind of get a little off put because I'm not sure if they're expecting me to just court them. I mean, can we court each other? Like why? Are, so anyways, so she orders her food first and then about like 30 minutes later I order mine. And so I get my food and she never gets her food. And she also, she gets a drink and turns out she doesn't like the drink. And so what she asked me is if I could ask the waiter if she could she'd get her drink switched. And I'm sitting here thinking, And mind you, in the beginning of the date, I said, you know, if there's anything you need, I got you. You know, like if you don't like to speak up, I got you. But I wasn't thinking like you weren't going to speak to the waiter. <laughs> I'm like, OK. Um, and then my food is there. And so I'm thinking, oh, no. Oh, no. Do you want some of my food? Do you want some of my food? So I give her, you know, I give her my food and she's like, you know, thank you. She's, she's eating some of my food and I'm just thinking, wow, is this what it's like being on the other side of things? I'm, cause I'm usually the one, it's, it's just so weird being the opposite one. I'm usually the one that's eating the food and now I'm offering my food and then her food still isn't there. And so she's like, you know, you know, can you go talk to them? And I'm thinking, damn it. Cause I already saw the movie. I didn't want to get up, but, and I just wanted to eat my food, but I already saw the movie. It's okay. She took the first bite of my food. She did. Mm -hmm. I let her take the first bite of my food. And I got up and I went to go talk to the peoples. And I'm like, hello, you know, my date hasn't gotten her food, blah, blah, blah. When really I'm just standing there very awkward. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> she hasn't gotten her food. <laughs> the whole date, I'm just thinking, I'm so uncomfortable. This is, wrong. This is wrong. This is not where I need to be. 
and it solidified for me that I'm good. First, it solidified for me I was good off dating for a second. Um, but second, it solidified for me that this is not me. And this whole masculine perception thing has fully been a perception, an outside perception, an outside perspective. And that has not been me this whole time. But regardless, you know, we're still friends. She's awesome. I love her. I love her to death. I realized like, fuck, I pay too much attention to other people's opinions. Cause why is this bothering me so much? Why does it, why does it make me literally so angry when someone tells me, maybe you're just a no label because maybe you're just you instead of fitting into a box. I want it so badly to fit into a box so that I could meet, I could meet people that also fit into the opposite box so that we could be together. But that is again, participating in this heteronormative society that we need to be with this, this, and this. So I myself am still breaking out of that, but I didn't realize that Compet would still be here, you know, after coming out, after years of coming out, you know, I didn't know it was still going to be something that is in the back of my mind, which I think, um, I do want to discuss more on the channel. So if you want more videos about Compet, let me know because it's been that this stuff has been resurfacing for me. Regardless though, I think it's time for me to let go of other people's opinions. I, I really feel like now I have the time and the money to actually care about what I look like. Um, I still don't know. I, I really still don't know what that looks like, but I don't want to be under a microscope or labeled while I figure that out. Um, so for the time being, I'm thinking, you know, because everything's a spectrum, everything is whatever you are, what you say you are at this point. And at this moment, I'm going to fade into the no label land and let me, let me be for a little bit as I figure out myself. Um, I'm, I'm so, so sick of letting other people tell me who I am. And it's really trying for me to figure out who the fuck I am myself. So that's the journey I'm on now. Let me know if you guys want me to let you in on that process. I definitely, look, I hate shopping. So if you wanna come with me while I have anxiety attacks in dressing rooms, cool, I'll take you. You just gotta let me know. I, look, I'm down. I'm down to create whatever content you wanna see. Hopefully I'll still find somebody who will love me for who I am, regardless of whatever I identify as, but I'm not dating anyway, so does that matter? <laughs> we established that in the last video. <laughs> I'm lying, I definitely doing dating apps again, so that's another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all of you beautiful humans. Um, this is me deflecting. I love you all very much, and I will see you guys in the <laughs> next one. <laughs> Bye.